see what we got here. Paige and Kalashaw, Gutierrez and Isola. The Chosen Four. Wonder how we came away with that lineup. Today! Final two lineup. The results of a collegiate basketball game. Let's go! <laughs> They can pick their friends, they can pick their nose, they cannot pick basketball <laughs> games. Except Israel Gutierrez, a champion Ooh. in our midst. The one man with the clairvoyance to pick Duke. What a roller coaster this was for you. It's kind of like you started at the bottom and now you're here, Israel. Kinda, yeah, I see where you're going with that. As for everybody else, only a Don there above 80%. Frankie Tim, you were dead in the disco. For the group setting, the real champion, Bulminator 2. We bow before you and send you free stuff. Holler back at us, tell us about yourself. We'll get a care package on the way. Also, Israel, three unilluminations coming your way to be used at your own discretion in 2015. Oh, oh, it wasn't. Void that. where prohibited. Get it? Got it? Good. Let's do a show. It's the first word. Your first word could be Duke or Championship. They could be Tyus Stones, as Seth Davis said. Or that Grayson Allen looks like Ted Cruz, Ben McKenzie, King Joffrey. But they could also be refs, so we start there. Every game has questionable calls. Every game has block charges or just the tips. But not every game, every championship game, has the defeated coach <laughs> saying it's a shame the game has to be played that way with all the hands and checking, as Bo Ryan told Tracy Wilson after. So, Woody... Does Wisconsin have beef with the refs? No, not at all. And Bo's just acting frustrated. He's whining. He's a, a poor loser. You ended up with two fouls in the first half. And the score was 31 to 31. You should have taken advantage. The other team had Okafor on the bench in foul trouble. You want to talk about the fouls? What happened in the Kentucky game? You wouldn't have won that if there hadn't been a bad call. I think Bo Ryan just... It was just so a a apprehensive, he was so exasperated afterward that he just wanted to go off on the officiating, and he was pushed in that direction, and he responded. Tim Kalisha? I disagree. First of all, I don't think he really went off. I think he, he said a few things, but he didn't have a rant about it. Secondly, I think if you're the Wisconsin coach, the way the calls went, you kind of ignore the fact that Wisconsin's got some very favorable calls in the middle of the game, but at the end, Justice Winslow should have got his fourth foul right after 0-4. Justice Winslow stepped out of bounds. They missed that. Justice Winslow touched the ball going out of bounds. Okay. So justice was not served is what you're saying. Right when Tracy Wolfson is talking to you, yes. Mm -hmm. Israel, beef with the refereeing last Here, night? Here's a news flash, Tim. College officiating is not perfect. In fact, it's far from perfect. In fact, it's generally kind of bad. And that's what that game was. It was indicative of every other college basketball game that I've seen all year long. You can't rely on the referees. If you're Bo Ryan, if you say a few words about it, you might as well go on a rant because people are going to see it the same way. You are a sore loser, and you lost this game poorly. And that's, that's exactly what happened. Look, this is an offensive team, the most efficient offense of the last 15 years. Scored four points in the last five minutes to Duke's 12. You, their playmakers made more plays than yours. The refs were not really there. Frank, was this about officiating to you, or was it about what Duke did? I, I think it's a, definitely both. And when I look at Bo Ryan, you know, he woke up Monday. He could have gotten into the Hall of Fame. He could have won a national championship. Neither of them happened. After the game, clearly frustrated. It's the last time he's ever going to see this group of players. But, you know, you have to show a little bit more sportsmanship. Here's the bottom line. Okafor, four fouls. Winslow, four fouls. Uh, Kaminsky played 39 minutes. He was called for one foul. I wouldn't be complaining about that. I would be c complaining about the officials going to look at the monitor. It, the, the ball clearly comes off Winslow's finger, yet they still give the ball back to Duke. Two calls, two huge calls in the final 320. That's what killed him. Israel Woody, if not the officiating, what turned this game? There were nine minutes left. Kaminsky had that N1, Okafor fourth foul. How did Wisconsin lose it from there, Israel? How did Duke win it? Because when Duke was in trouble with their two main players in foul trouble, Grayson Allen and Tyus Jones came through the most. Grayson Allen a couple times put his head down, made a play. That kept Duke, you know, right there. And then they finally pulled away at the end. Well, I think it was about defense. And Duke was more aggressive in this game knowing that Wisconsin was coming off that tough uh, game with Kentucky. They became aggressive. They wore Wisconsin out with their guards in Calisho? the second half. I think I turned it around. This was the opposite of last year when Connecticut's veterans 
were better than Kentucky's freshmen. In the last 10 minutes, Duke's freshmen were better than Wisconsin's seniors. In the last 20 minutes, they scored all 37 points in the second yes. half in the national title game. That's what the freshmen did. In the post game, anybody here, Bo Ryan, also invoked the existence of the rent player and also saying that's not how he does it? <clears throat> Palace, how did that come off to you? You know, I, I think he's, he's really just talking about his team. I really don't think he's taking shots at Kentucky or other teams or Duke. Uh, I really think he's trying to express why he feels the way he does. I've got seniors here. These guys stay four years. That's how we do things here. I don't really know what it's like when players come in and go after one year. That's why my emotions are so Israel, strong. Right. is that what you heard? Yeah, no, as much as I want to beat up on Bull Ryan about the previous subject, this one, he was talking about his seniors, the guys who stay four years, guys who he has a connection with. And he was saying after that, basically, we don't do the rent a fifth year senior transfer thing. Like, so basically, none of his seniors have only had one year with them. They've all had four or more years with them. Therefore, he's going to miss But who entirely. does that? So really, I kind of think I mean, that hasn't, been a, that hasn't been a talking point for any team this year. Has it really been? Uh, a few teams do it. A few teams take the transfers late. And then their football team did it with Russell Wilson. So there Frank. you go. Hey, the expression that he used, you know, rent a player. Go tell a security guard that he's a rent a cop. I'm sure he's not going to be offended by that. Come on, guys. He was definitely talking about Kentucky and Duke and even fifth year seniors. I get all that. But if Okafor had come out of high school and went to Bo Ryan and said, you know what, I'd love to play for you. In fact, I love Frank Kaminsky's number. Would you let me wear his number? Bo Ryan would say, absolutely. Even if you're only going to stay here for one year. To me, that's sour grapes right there. Woody Page. Well, the reason why he can say that is because he doesn't get those type of players. Frank, let's be frank about it. He gets under, uh, he gets overachievers that come there and they stay for four years and they become like Kaminsky and Decker. After playing their four years, we would see that everywhere. So he's actually better off than a lot of schools because he does get to have those guys around yeah. and build them. Right. Kyle Shaw. You're right. He's got to know, not that he can necessarily never win one, but this was his great opportunity, back-to-back -back Final Four teams. That's what makes it so painful. Okay, and now Mike Krzyzewski. Five is halfway to wooden, people, but in a completely different era, as Bo Ryan might tell you. Israel, how do you view Coach K today? A lot of people talking about he's among the greats with wooden, but he was among before this game, so how do you view him today? I think he's right there with Wooden. I think five in this era is just, just as much equal to ten in, in John Wooden's era. If you think about the way, even within his era, has done it different ways. I mean, you had that stacked team where they beat UNLV. I mean, think about the talents on those teams. He had a, he had a, a championship team with John Shire and Kyle Singler and Nolan. I mean, no offense to those guys, but come on. I mean, that wasn't the greatest talented team ever. Won a championship with that team. He did it with four-year guys like Shane Battier. He's done it with one and dunners like J Jaleel Okafor. I mean, he's basically basically done it every single way. The guy's the greatest basketball coach right now. So you're right there with Wooden. How about you, Frank? He's definitely up there, absolutely. And you think about the fact he's made the Final Four in four different decades, and he's absolutely done it. He's adapted with the times. While everyone looked at Kentucky and say, shame, shame on Kentucky, taking these one-and-done guys, Duke has done that. Jabari Parker, Kyrie Irving, now Jalil Okafor, Tyus Jones, and Justice Winslow. So I give a lot of credit, but don't talk about the Olympics, please. I could win with LeBron James, Carmelo Anthony, Kobe Bryant, and Chris Paul. Let me... It's not about you, Frank. Mm. Woody Page, please. <laughs> it's almost as if Israel stepped into my mind and stole my stuff. He's absolutely right. I put him at the top. And, Frank, I am going to mention the Olympics because he can do it with yeah, he can do it with urine. He can do it with Ben. He can do it with NBA players. He Excuse can do me? it with college players. If you add the two Olympics and you add the <laughs> five collegiate championships, that's seven. In an era where he did have to play different teams. He was the first one to adapt to what to do with the three-point line in college basketball. Ball. John Wooden basically did it with a couple of guys, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and Bill Walton. Yes, great players. But well, it's more than a couple time. because they only have three years of eligibility, and the final number was ten. So at least give him a few. Callis shall last word. Yeah, he, he's got to be more than halfway to Wood. That's why the accomplishment is so much harder now. He's done it with guys who stayed forever, a mix, and now he's done it with freshmen. Three different ways. Page 10, Kalisha 12, Gutierrez 31, and three on eliminations yeah. again for right. all year long. And I stole a third team. We're taking a break. Fire Coming up, UK. They're not. Cal picking up the pieces. And also, who's going pro and who's not? Whether. Tank versus Ja helped or hurt either or both on that front last night. And also, also, uh, a Masters uh, preview just like every other. Uh,
gopher like that. Oh, Which consists of you guys yapping about Tiger and Tiger Tongue as he's close. I'm really close. Like <laughs> Tiger Tongue. Buy or sell. Just imagine. You lose the Tournament of Champions, but then you get the phone call to say you've made the Around the Horn Hall of Fame. How do you feel? Uh, it doesn't compare, fellas. Calipari's week of extremes continues. He's talking about losing five to seven Wildcats to the draft. That's Towns and Coley Stein, Harrison, Zachary Johnson, Devin Booker, Trey Lyles. This season in totality, Woody, will this one loss team be remembered for the 38 or the 1? Ten years from now, nobody will remember the 38. They're always going to remember the one because they had him in, had Kentucky in the bracket. Let's go back to 90-91. UNLV went into the final game and lost it. Does anybody remember how many they won? No, nobody here remembers. Well, I think 34. people do remember because they come up in conversations like that, like you just did. Timmy, how about you? Unfortunately, it's going to be the one because this was an undefeated team that was even money against the field uh, going into this NCAA tournament. Everybody expected them to win. When that didn't happen, that's all we're going to remember. I agree. It's going to be the one. And part of the problem, I guess you could call it, is that John Calipari, for as long as he stays there and keeps compiling these great recruiting classes of McDonald's All-Americans, you know, the more and more he's going to go through this, these teams are going to remember it as the disappointments in that sort of era. So you know? would you so say I think this is just going to be another Israel? disappointment. I do, I do. Yeah. Frank, you agree with that? No, it's not a failure. First team ever to go 38 no. And the, the reason why people, uh, you know, you can't compare it to the Vegas team. The Vegas team won a championship. Kentucky, the program, the fans, they based their success on championships. Unfortunately, they fell two games short. Buy or sell two is Kaminsky versus Oldsport. Two guys that came down to player of the year. Two guys the season came down to last night. Frank's moments where it looked like he was about to take over but didn't. Jaws moments where it looked like he was about to get away from him but didn't. Tim, who showed better and what did last night tell you about the two? Oh, I thought Kaminsky was much better. I thought the game was a little too much for Okafor, which sounds funny to say a guy that's going to be drafted in the top three for sure in the NBA draft wasn't ready for a game like this. But even when he, he had a long time to sit, he came back in. He got another foul immediately. He went back. Should Kaminsky last night give better. NBA teams pause with Okafor, Tim? No, because this is a freshman. This has nothing Israel? at all to do with his NBA career. Yeah, no, not last night in particular. I mean, there's some deficiencies there. Defensively, not great. Doesn't really have an outside shot to speak of. But, you know, I thought Frank showed better last night. But in the overall, you still saw moments where, where uh, Okafor was dominant. As a matter of fact, he missed some easy shots. Like, he could have uh, boosted up his scoring total that way. But in the overall, it doesn't change the big picture. Yeah, I thought he missed a, a bunch of bunnies early in the game. And Kaminsky actually did better when Okafor was in the game. Okafor getting into foul trouble probably hurt Kaminsky. In terms of the next level, Okafor defensively, he needs to improve. And his fitness needs to improve. And next level, Kaminsky, where, what do you see, Frank? Brad, I see a Brad Miller type, a seven-footer that could shoot from the outside, a good solid backup. Woody Page? Yeah, I think he could be a starter for a lot of teams in this league, and I think he proved again last night. His line was was excellent. I mean, he played, though, uh, 18 minutes more than Okafor, and Okafor is going to be the better pro if you want to look ahead. But last night, Kaminsky had the better game, no doubt about it. The non-Kaminsky Okafor guys from last night, Winslow, of course, Jones, Allen. Okay, said today Allen will be returning. Decker, Hayes, who also said probably to a stenographer. He'll be back. And you can bring in the Kentucky guys into this conversation to Israel. Who are the most NBA ready and who aren't? Uh, I think Carl Anthony Towns is very much NBA ready. You can put him in the post right now and he can uh, draw fouls and, and get some scores there. I think Justice Winslow, though, 14-9 and nine with one and a half steals and 1.7 blocks for the tournament. I think that guy can come in and be sort of a Gerald right. Wallace type without the busted jumper. Yeah, Justice uh, Winslow, to me, he's like a jack of all trades. Kawhi Leonard type, maybe a uh, you know Jimmy Ooh. Butler type, mm. but I'm looking at Tyus Jones. You wonder with the game that he had, strike while the iron is hot. He was dominant in that final game. You wonder if he'll consider uh, coming out. So if you're a shady character, if if you're a shady character in the shadows, would you advise Tyus Jones to go pro, Frank? I probably would. You know, he's never going to have a moment like that. Never. Oh, that's always that's always the refrain. How could it get any better than this? You say the Scotty same Thurman. Ask Scotty Thurman. Woody, how about you? Uh, you said if he's a shadow, yeah, shadowy no. character, look at Frank. 
you know, Florida won those two national championships. They had all five guys drafted in the first round. Yeah. Who actually ended up being a great pro? That was Noah. I think you go with oh, Okafor. Well. That despite what happened, yeah, but I think you go with Okafor because you want that big man. Callie Shaw, you? For 10, 11 years. Uh, Sam Decker didn't play well last night, but I think he's going to be good. Uh, Seth Greenberg compared him to Taylor Parsons, but I agree with Izzy that the most intriguing guy is Justice Winslow. I think he's he's got he's just starting to show what he can do. He'll be he'll be very good within three years. All right, Woody Page. Uh, <laughs> too many Urkels in your argument today. That's why you're Winslow. The first to go with the last word. <laughs> this was not my most. Bright, shining moment of my life. Oh, okay. That's all right. Even the piccolo player got a moment, though, one shining moment. So you can come back. Al, it's up. Gutierrez, I still a lightning round next. We're coming up, talking some baseball. Yankees fans cheering Alex Rodriguez. But before your hot take on that, it should be noted, they also cheered the fan who threw the ball back at another fan's head. <laughs> Hood! <laughs> Is the biz to take off the lightning round 36? I stole the Kalashaw. Anybody's ball game for that second spot. Yankees fans cheering A Rod yesterday. They say Forge won the three. <laughs> what did you think of the reception, Kalashaw? I was fine with it. I watched it. There was a lot of clapping. Uh, I think they're tired of it. I think I think no man has paid a bigger price for trying to hit home runs than A-Rod. They want to move beyond. It's opening day. Give him a few real? cheers. I know you're not trying to get points, but there was a lot of clapping. Uh, listen, uh, the only difference that, that A-Rod between anybody else who was suspected of using or actually admitted to using PEDs is it just took him longer and he was a little bit more awkward with his uh, with his apology. In terms of the fan reaction, that's exactly how they're supposed to react. It's, it's no I different than anybody that. else. Yeah, you know, Mariano's gone, Derek Jeter is gone. Did you see some of the players the Yankees were throwing out there? A-Rod is the biggest name. He sat out for a year. Yeah, he might be a dirty, rotten scoundrel, but he's our dirty, rotten scoundrel. <laughs> I like that, Frank. You are our you dirty, him. rotten scoundrel. Lightning 2, Tory Hunter saying Joe West is wrong with his third strike call to end yesterday's game. Wrong not to check with another up that he must have had a concert to play, Country Joe West, <laughs> and that it was made more difficult because Hunter was battling against the best closer of our time, Joe Nathan. Israel, you all right with Hunter there? <laughs> uh, not all of it, but it's the, certainly the Joe West part. I mean, all you have to do is ask the first base umpire, the first base umpire in that scenario. It's all about ego. Oh, my eyes are better than that guy's eyes. I can go ahead and call him out. Yes. Just ask. It takes Ice. two seconds. Tori Hunter, you're completely out of line for uh, mentioning Joe Nathan in the same breath as Mariano Rivera. That's a joke. You have to. The etiquette is look at the first base umpire. I'm telling you, the first base umpire, I'll guarantee you, he has a problem with Joe West as well. Cal Shaw. It's the end of the game. It's opening day. All you got to do is get the call right. Don't be part of the story. Joe Please West play. became part of the story. Just go down there. Make sure he went around. The game is over and there's no... Controversy. This is all on Joe West, not Tori Hunter. Ooh, Cal, show you're part of the story right now, and this is how it ends. The end. What's the last word? <laughs> and this story was better than my bracket, so I see the <laughs> Good Gutierrez and Isola is our showdown. Next. And straight ahead, a rain delay in a stadium with a roof, which is like baseball <laughs> cupcake scoring. A touchdown. <laughs> That's got to be on purpose. Ford! Too much jibber jabber day. We only have time for a pick of tonight's national championship. Just say it out loud, Israel Frank. Notre Dame or UConn? UConn. UConn. Big. Was, uh, refrain. Okay. Showdown one. Tiger Woods. Quote. It's finally there. Quote. I'm on the good side now. Quote. This <laughs> after 11 holes at Augusta yesterday. He's ready. Masters starts Thursday. Will he make the cut, Israel? Uh, well, he made the cut, sure, but all this talk is starting to remind me. I was trying to think, who does Tiger Woods sound like? Because it's always something. It's, oh, this is my time. This is my time. He's become the Chicago Cubs of golf. This year wow. will be the year. This Ooh. tournament will be the tournament. We'll give you, yeah. we'll give you yeah. the polite golf clap. You know, he hasn't, it's 63 days since he last played. He's shot up. He's 15 over par in 47 holes in 2015. He's not going to make the cut at Augusta. He's not ready. Okay. Nor is he going to. I go Cubs of, of golf. Is <laughs> there's a there. point for I'm having the owns to say that real quick? Masters <laughs> preview. Pick somebody. Go. Jordan. Jordan Spieth. 
Oh, what is I happening on this show right now? Double <laughs> mute. Get some imagination. We'll move on. Show that to a rain delay at a ballpark with a retractable roof. Marlins just put the tarp on the field because they have no tarp because, again, they have a retractable roof. Frank, this is opening day. Explain hey, this. Come on. Come on now. We went through three months of brutal weather. I got to get upset because they had a half hour of a little bit of rain. This is Miami where they seem to do everything wrong, yet somehow in the last 20 years, they've won two World Series. Listen, the Mets haven't done, that. The flash, haven't done that. The weather in Miami and South Florida is unpredictable. Here's the thing. That's why you have a roof. Stop <laughs> exactly. trusting your phone app exactly. and close the roof. Well, maybe Nobody's if they spent a couple hundred million more on the stadium, they could have figured it out. Got to do That's right. Sure. <laughs> All right, uh, FaceTime preview. you got to say it at the same time. Who wins today's showdown? Go. Israel Frank Gutierrez. No, I thought you might say the same answer this time. Israel shows all about you. Let's go. I want to take some time to actually uh, look at what's happening in Brooklyn right now. There's people playing really good basketball. It's the Brooklyn Nets. All of a sudden, they're in the seventh spot in the Eastern Conference. Brooke Lopez, in his last 11 games, 26 points, 10 rebounds, 2.5 blocks, shooting better than 60%. Darren Williams, in his last four, 23-8, and eight, and shooting 65% from three. And now, all of a sudden, they're in playoff position, and they might play the Cavs, who they just beat like 10, 11 days ago. Pay attention to Brooklyn. They actually have players playing like they're stars again. The show Look is too Frank's New York reaction. centric. Look at Frank's reaction. The show is too New York centric. It's the problem. We're going to do it, folks. We're off till Monday because of the Masters Cooter Melt. That's uh, 143 and a half. Geico presents Strange Savings Stories. Astronomers detected an interstellar transmission. It stated, Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. The implications were staggering. Was the cosmos telling us we could all save hundreds on car insurance with Geico? Or did their radar merely pick up a signal from the nearby Rufus and Clyde's morning show? We may never know. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. ESPN Radio. With the action on the court, the diamond, or the gridiron. <laughs> Comes alive. The NBA. The San Antonio Spurs are the world champions. Major League Baseball. San Francisco Giants are the champions of the baseball world. The new college football playoff. College football playoff national champion, the Ohio State Buckeyes. Your home for the best in sports play-by-play. -play. ESPN Radio. Two of baseball's best go head-to-head -head in interleague action when the Tigers head to St. Louis to face the Cardinals. That one is gone. The pregame at 7 Eastern, first pitch at 8, Sunday on ESPN and ESPN Radio.